In this tutorial, we'll discuss how to create any mold like this in Blender, which you can use in a 3D printing machine. Our aim would be to send these molds to a 3D printer, and create real-life molds. And from those molds, you can then easily create any model, any decorative item, or maybe some quick prototype. So we can use Blender even in our everyday life. And we'll also discuss how to create these keys that go into the female parts of our mold. Keys are very important, as they help us to join the two parts of the mold tightly and correctly. So let us start with the base file of this tutorial. Here, we have already created a flower vase. We'll first create a mold for this, so that we can 3D print a mold, and then create this vase in real from that mold. We have named this model simply as model. First, let us add one cube. We need to move this cube upward, so that it covers our model entirely. And we may also need to resize the cube, based on the size of our model. Let us turn on the wireframe view mode, so that we can see the inside parts. Now, press 1 on your number keypad, to go to the front view mode. We'll resize the cube here, by slowly changing these size factors, so that it completely covers our model. Maybe we can go for a factor of 1.5. And we need to bring it down, so that the top end of our cube just touches the top end of the flower vase. Perfect. Now what we'll do is, we'll cut this cube into half, so that we get only one part, or the left part of our final mold. We are going to do that in the X dimension. So let us change this X scale factor, to half of what we currently have here. So we'll change this to 0.75. And we need to move it toward the left, like this, so that it just covers the left half, and nothing more. We can directly enter the correct value here, which is minus 0.75. It should be exactly half of this number, but it is on the negative side, because this is negative x direction. So we are now done with its size and the location. Let us turn on the material view mode. We'll cut out our model from this cube to create the mold, so while the cube is selected here, let us go to the modifiers tab, and add one boolean modifier. Please ensure that the difference option is selected. Then in this target field, we have to select our model. But we see that our cube suddenly disappeared with this operation. That is because it does not always work correctly. Sometimes you may need to enable this option called self-intersection. Or you can also use this fast option. Many a time this method gives us the correct result. To know whether the result is correct or not, you can simply hide the model. Now you can see that a nice figure is made from the cube. This will help us to create the mold. Once you are satisfied that the model is cut out perfectly, you can apply this modifier. Now the model can be deleted as well, it is no longer needed. So we got one half of our mold, which is the left half. We need to also create the other half, but we can simply press Shift D to duplicate this part, since our model is a symmetric one. This can work as our right side mold. So you just need to 3D print any one side two times and join them together. But if your object is not symmetrical, you can create the right half in the same way. Once they are ready, we also need to create the keys here so that the two halves lock perfectly, when we place them together as one mold. Actually we'll first create the keys for one, and then we'll duplicate it for the other side. So let us delete this part. Now go to the add menu, and add another cube. We will resize this cube to create our keys. So let us change these scale factors, to make it smaller. We can directly enter a factor of 0.3, in the X scale factor, then 0.1 for the Y scale, and 0.2 for the Z scale. Now, you need to decide, where exactly on this mold you want to place the keys. You should select a clear area, away from the actual model, so let us place it somewhere here. We'll create the female part, or the lock on this side, and then we'll use this same thing on the other side to create the male part, or the key for our lock. But this key lock combination can actually fail in reality. It will work better, if we first add some bevel and some taper to this. So go to the modifiers tab, and add a simple deform modifier. Switch over to the taper option, so that we get a taper like this. But we will use a lower value, maybe 0.1. That should be sufficient for our purpose. Now apply this modifier, and then add a bevel modifier. This 0.1 value is good enough, but let us increase this segment value, maybe to 5. Then apply this modifier as well. So we got some roundness added to all the edges of our key, and it is also slightly tapered. 
This will be proved very helpful when you try to actually insert the key into its hole in order to fit the two parts together. We have to now place this key perfectly. We need to ensure that on this side, the key has exactly 50% overlap inside our mold. So, let us directly modify its location value to zero. However, the other fields, the Y and Z locations do not matter much, you can use them to position the key as you wish. Let us use a whole number, like 2 for its Z location. And let us enter minus 1.15 here. Now, it will be a better design, and a more useful design, if we add another set of lock and key on the lower side of our mold. So press Shift D on your keyboard to create a duplicate copy of this key and move it down right here. We need to ensure that the X location is zero. And the Y location has the same value as that of the other one. Only the Z location will be something different, like zero. So we have the set of two keys here. Now we'll cut the holes from them for the female parts, and then we'll add the same keys on this side for the male parts. So select the cube or the mold. Then go to the modifiers tab and add one boolean modifier. We have to use the difference option and in the target object, select the first cube or the first key. If you now hide this, you'll see that a nice hole is made from our key. It is working correctly, so we'll create the second hole like this. Let us first apply this modifier. Then add another boolean modifier. And this time we'll select the second cube. Let us apply this as well. If we hide this, we can see that two holes or two locks are created nicely for our mold. We'll now add the actual keys. We need to add them to this side, matching the lock positions. So let us bring back our cubes. We'll select them together and move them toward the other side. But we need to ensure that their positions are exactly matching with this pair of holes. So select a cube and in the object properties, rectify this Y location value. It will be opposite in sign, but the value will be same as that of its hole. Now, please remember that our keys have got some taper, like this, so we need to rotate the keys, so that they can enter into this hole. That means, we have to change its zero rotation by 180 degrees. And the same thing to be done for the other one as well. It will also help a lot if we slightly reduce them in size, compared to the size of their respective holes. Otherwise you may find it little difficult to push the keys into the holes, it may get stuck here. We will reduce these scale factors by a small amount. So, go to the object menu, and then apply the scales. Now reduce these values, maybe to 0.99 or 98. Again for this one, let us similarly first apply the scale factors. Then we'll reduce these factors to that same 0.98. Now we are ready to join these keys with our mold. So select the mold, go to the modifiers tab, and add a boolean modifier. We have to use this union option. And in the target object, select the first cube. But if the mold disappears like this, you can switch over to this fast option. Let us now apply this modifier, and then add another boolean modifier. Select the union option, and this time in the target object, select the second cube. Let us then apply this modifier as well. We can now delete these cubes, since their purpose is over. So our mold is fully ready. And it has got both the male keys and the female keys or the locks. The lock and key mechanism will help us to lock it with the other half. Since our model is symmetric, we can simply duplicate this to create the right half. In a similar way, if you want you can also break it into four symmetric parts. It is always better to look for an axis of symmetry, because molds work better when they are symmetric. Even if your model is not symmetric in one dimension, it may have a symmetry in another dimension, you can use that. So we discussed a quick technique to create any model prototype, if you just have a 3D printer. All that you need to do now is, 3D print these molds, and join them together. You can then create your model in real, using any type of material you like, because they are now real life molds. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.